All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're going to set up our player a little bit better in Pico. What we have right now, if I hit Control R, is we have a player that can move back and forth, but we want him to be able to do different things. We want to be able to set him up to, you know, kind of make a bigger, complicated game. And right now, this is just a really basic kind of thrown together way to get some movement, which works for learning, but it's not, you know, the very best way to do it. So if you watched my first tutorial, we kind of went through how to set this up. Real quick, we have three main functions that kind of make up the main game loop. There's init, which gets called once at the very beginning. There's update, which gets called every frame. And then draw, which gets called after update every frame. And the idea is that you set things up in init, you kind of do your math and calculations and stuff in update, and then you actually draw things to the screen in draw. So what we're doing is we're setting our position. And then when we push a button, either right or left, we either add or take away one from that position. And then we clear the screen and draw sprite one at that position on the X axis. And its Y axis position is 63. This is fine and we can do this, but it's actually better to set up a player kind of like a class. Now, um, a class is basically kind of like a type of thing in a game. So you might have a class for your player. You might have a class for an enemy. It's sort of like a category for a character or an object or, you know, a bullet. It's like one thing that's going to have a bunch of properties. And the way that we make a class in Pico is we use a table. So under the init, I think what I'll do is say player. This is going to be the player class equals, and then we'll do two curly brackets. Now, what this does is this makes a table called player. With a table, you can add multiple different variables. So like you could say X equals one. And then if you want to add another variable, you can say comma. So like Y equals one, you know, hat equals false. And you can make a bunch of different stuff all in one variable. And then you can access all of those things later by doing something like player dot X, and that will return whatever this X value is. So it's a really slick way to make things. And actually what we'll do is after this curly brace, I'm going to hit enter. And then we're going to kind of make each one of these on their own line, making sure that we have a comma after every line, except for the last line. We'll also take all of this and tab it in one just so we know it's part of player. And let's see, I don't actually want hat. So we'll just start with X equals, let's do 63 again, and Y equals 63. We'll get rid of position. And now if we go down here, instead of position, let's say player.x and player.x. And then here for this position, we'll say player dot X. So really what we've done is not change a whole lot. So I'll hit control S and then control R to run and we can hit back and forth and our guy still goes. But now it's really easy to also make these controls for the Y axis. So I'll just select all of this, hit control C, bring down a couple lines and hit control V and fix our spacing here a little bit. So this is going to be Y movement. Remember Y is the up and down. So now instead of button right, we want button down. I'll hit shift D to add a little down arrow and then shift U to hit an up arrow. And instead of X, we'll say Y here. And the coordinates always start in the upper left-hand corner. And as you go to the right, it goes up on the X axis. As you go down, it goes up on the Y axis. It's kind of backwards on the Y axis, but once you get used to it, it's fine. So if when we hit down, we want to go up on the Y axis. When we hit up, we want to go down on the Y axis. It's kind of weird. But so we have those, and now we need to tell the sprite to draw at the right place, player X comma player Y. So I'll hit control S and control R. And now I can go both left and right and up and down. So that's pretty much how you make four wave movement using a player class. And what's really cool is you can add any number of things to this player class 
and you can always access it just with this dot and it's pretty handy. So what people will do quite a bit is go to the sprite. Let's make our sprite a little bit more complicated here. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a car instead, right? This is just a little easier to show. All right. So we have the windshield here and we have our wheels. Okay. This is pointing to the right, right? And so what we might want to do is when it drives to the left, we want it to flip. And so what I like to do is type F equals false here. And so now player has a property of F, which is flip and a sprite. When you draw a sprite, one of the, one of the, uh, arguments that you put in here is to flip it. So, um, Kind of how it works is it goes sprite, which, which sprite it is, and then X and then Y, and then it's going to be the sprite width, which is going to be one and the height, which is going to be one. And then it's flip. And so we'll say player dot F. And so now when we go to the right, we don't need this to flip. So we'll say player dot F equals false. When we go to the left, we do want it to flip. So we'll say player dot F equals true. And now when we go to the left, he flips. And when we go to the right, he flips back, right? So now we can drive back and forth and we can kind of do the same thing with up and down. You can even, um, if you want to change the sprites frame, like if he's going to go up and down like this. So if we go to here and let's make Sprite two have this car that kind of drives up and down. Right. So we'll have, I don't know. It's a really good car. Okay. There's, there's the up and down. It's like, it's not great. Okay. But you get the idea. Uh, so now he's like facing up and this is Sprite two. So we can say like, comma. So SP for Sprite. So we'll start with Sprite one. I'll go left and right. SP equals one. Oops. Player dot SP equals one player dot SP equals one. And then when he's going up and down, we'll say player dot SP equals two and player dot SP equals two. And we can also flip him on the up and down axis. And so we'll say player dot F let's call it F Y and F X. So this is flip X. This is flip Y. So instead of F here, we'll say F X. This one up here will be F X and we'll say F Y equals false. And now we can also have this flip up and down. So player dot F Y equals, uh, true and player dot F Y equals false. Now, if we run this left, he flips this way, right? He flips this way. If I go up and down, he sort of works, <laughs> but we're not switching out the sprite for some reason. The reason for that is we haven't told this first argument to be player dot SP. Great. Save run now left and right works up and down works too. So now we have four way movement and it's <laughs> there we go. And there's a little bit of bugs to go to work out with it, but that's basically how it works. For instance, this is flipping. If we hit what we need to do is reset this flip for every single direction here. So this FX doesn't really matter for the up and down, but the flip Y does. So let's just say flip Y equals false here and here. Okay. 
Let's make sure this works up down. There we go. So now he can drive anywhere he wants and it totally works. All right. So to go over this, just so we understand it, in the init function, we're making player, and this is a table. And a table has multiple different properties we can add, and they're inside of a curly bracket. So we have player.x, player.y, we have flip x and flip y and sprite, and we have to have commas after every line except for the last line. And then in update, every time we hit a button direction, we're moving it. We're also setting the flip for X and the flip for Y and the sprite. And we're doing that for right, left, down, and up. And this is all in the update function. And then when we draw it, we clear the screen. And when we write this, when we tell it to draw this sprite, we're giving it several arguments here, which are just the properties of our player. So the first argument is what sprite do we draw? Then where do we draw it on X? Where do we draw it on Y? the width of the sprite, the height of the sprite, whether we're flipping it on X, whether we're flipping it on Y, and that's it. So that's really basic four-way movement inside of Pico. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna be posting more Pico videos. So uh, subscribe if you want to, that'd be nice.